Holy crap. Vander Sloot finally confesses. This piece of crap finally confesses to Holloway's murder. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So we're going to listen to his full confession and the mother's response. It's just, it's just tragic. And it's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. And the, the anguish and the torment of not knowing what happened to their daughter all these years and has finally come to a close. I know they suspected him the whole time, especially when he came, when he was seen on camera at a hotel going in with that other woman and he kills her. I mean, everybody knew he was guilty. Plus, uh, she, she asked to go back to her hotel, but I was just trying to get dropped off a little bit uh, further away from her hotel. So we could uh, walk back to her hotel, and I might still get a chance to to be with her. That's so, what I was hoping for. Okay. So what happens? Um, yeah, Deepak drops me off at a at a place uh, a little right of the of the Marriott Hotel, known as the Fisherman's Huts. Um, this place uh, is not so far from you know the next hotel is the Marriott, and the next hotel after that is is another Marriott. Uh, which is a timeshare, and then it's the, the Holiday Inn. Uh, we we walk along the beach. Uh, right. um, do Deepak and Satish get out? I'm with you. Uh, what 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 happens? Uh, Deep, Deepak and Satish leave. Uh, they uh, they leave. Uh, they go back to their home. I assume they go back to their home. Um, they get in their car and they leave. Uh, I'm actually with uh, I'm actually with uh, with Natalie walking along the beach. Uh, I find a space uh, before we get to the before we get to the Marriott Hotel, where I lay her down. We lay down together in the sand, and uh, start kissing each other. I start I get her to kiss me again. We start kissing each other, and uh, I start feeling her up again. And she tells me no. Tells me she doesn't want me to, to feel her up. I insist. I keep feeling her up either way. Um, the, she knees me. Uh, she ends up kneeing me in the crotch. Uh, when she knees me in the crotch, uh, I get up uh, on the beach and I kick her ex extremely hard in, in the face. Um, yeah, she's laying down... Uh, Unconscious, possibly even uh, even dead, but definitely unconscious. And uh, I see uh, right next to her, there's a there's a huge uh, cinder block laying on the beach. When you say cinder block, uh, looking at the walls of this uh, place, is it like those? The exact same cinder blocks. I see a huge cinder block laying on the on the beach. Uh, I take this and uh, yeah. I, I, I smash her head in with it completely. Uh, yeah, her face basically, you know, uh, collapses in. Even though it's dark, I can see her face is collapsed in. Um, uh, afterwards, I don't exactly know uh, what, uh, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Uh, and I, um, <clears throat> I decide to... To take her and uh, uh, to put her into the ocean, so I grab her and I half uh, half pull and half walk with her into the ocean. Um, I uh, I push her off. Uh, I walk up uh, up to about my knees into the ocean and I push her off into into the into the into the sea. Um, and, um, yeah, after that, I, I get out, I walk home. Hey, thank you so much for doing this. I know it's been a long day and a long 18 years for you. So we appreciate your time. And, you know, my first question is just how, how are you holding up? Yeah. Well, 
I think I'm holding it pretty well. It, it feels good. My son's here, right here on site with me, and that just makes me feel even stronger to have Natalie's brother, you know, because mm -hmm. um, he's out there doing interviews too, and I'm like, so it feels it feels good. I'm tired, but if, if it's a good tired. You said after the hearing today, you called it, you felt victorious. Yeah. Tell me yeah. about that. Because when I think back to who I was and what happened to me in 05 with Iran, and I'm s sitting there at the Holiday Inn at night, 4 a.m. in the morning, May 31st, 2005, and he's, he was over me. He held all the power over me, and I was desperate and just begging him mm -hmm. to give me Natalie, give her back. Where is she? And then now I fast forwarded to 18, and I feel like I have the power and the victory over him because all he's going to hear is that jail cell door slam mm -hmm. to remind him. He's a double murderer. So um, it feels very, I mean, that's, that's like a weight is lifting because we've sh we definitely came full circle to shift roles. So it feels very good. How um, over the years, not only have you had to deal with your own grief, but you were, you know, desperate for answers. We had this main suspect. And in the meantime, while you pushed and pushed, another young woman died. That must be devastating for you as hard as you were trying to get him put away yes because in 05 i knew that he was responsible for her disappearance i did not know that of course anything that we know today but i knew that he was definitely involved in her demise of her one way or the other so that was in 05 aruba let him go 2010 i had him aruba let him go freely to peru and bludgeon a second young girl to death so i'm thinking I did everything I could in 05 and 2010 to stop him, but Aruba did nothing besides be complicit with him and let him go. So, you know, that's why I feel like I can live with my decision that I got the answers that I wanted, even though, yes, it came with a plea agreement, but I did everything I knew to do to stop him on the, to, in the beginning. You got the confession that you wanted. You know now what he says happened. And does it, does it give you what you thought it would all these years that you've wanted to know those questions, that you wanted to have those questions answered? It gives me more than what I thought I was going to have. And I never thought about it just being over because there's been so many rabbit holes. I mean, they were just like a sea of rabbit holes, swirling theories. And I was in all of them because we, had, because we didn't have anything. And I think we just began chasing these you know, running down these rabbit holes repeatedly. So it's nice to, it's, it's, it's over, it's stopped. So my nightmare is over and I've always said that not knowing to me, since I've experienced that, it's far worse and more tumultuous than the knowing even as brutally hard as it is to your soul and heart. Yeah. He's, when he said those words, when he described what happened, he's, you know, he's lied to you in the past. We right. know that. Yes. Do you feel truth in it? Yes, I do. And the reason why, because it was such a comprehensive, you know, and conclusive, you know, series of events that took place, including the polygraph, the proffer. I have all this team at the federal agents there. And so the people that came in from Miami, the people here in Birmingham, the, the U.S. prosecutor. And so I felt, yes, and, and, I, and I was fortunate that I was able to hear it real time as well. And I think that is because um, I, I know the details of the story as well. So, yes, very confident. I even met with the polygrapher that was able to spend time with him and obtain these results. So I feel a thousand percent good and strong. I think he apologized to you and your family today, too. How do you receive that? I heard it, but I, I feel like it's a hollow apology because I don't think of a double murderer and someone who can extort money and make a mother of a child you murdered pay you money, you know. So it felt very hollow, felt very just, it felt scripted, but that's okay. I think all probably, especially murderers, found a priest in prison. They all seem to. So I think that's kind of normal. Yeah. So what do you do from here? What's next? What do I do from here? Well, I don't know yet. I thought I'd just kind of see what's on the agenda with Matt and my two grandchildren and kind of join life again. I feel like I put a lot of things on hold in the back burner and taken second places. So I think it's going to be nice to kind of, you know, feel a little bit more normal in society to know that's put to rest. 
and I did what I set out I'd do in 05, and I think about the people that helped me, starting with Greta, and then all the people in between from, like I said, the FBI in Miami, the FBI in Birmingham, the, the U.S. Attorney's Office here, and prosecutor, I mean, Lloyd Peoples, and everyone, Catherine Crosby, everyone has really rallied together as a team to make this happen, and then even getting involved, George Patriot, um, yeah, George Seymour with Patriot Strategies and his business associate, Mark. And I mean, I, I think of Peru, a good hearted Peru. I mean, Dina Bellarte. I mean, so Peru, I mean, in the US, thank goodness we have goodwill and they're passionate too and strong and wanted me to be able to have this opportunity. And so I'm grateful to Peru for giving me this opportunity. You mentioned Matt, what's this been like for him? growing up kind of in the shadow of this issue? You know, I don't really know. Um, I don't really know. But I know one thing, he he definitely, I think, has Natalie living through him. I mean, he went on and became an airline pilot and just, just so accomplished. And um, I think somehow she's living her life through him. So, and, um, but I, I think he, I think he's, as I said, that day I saw him June 9th, I went, oh, he's, he's going to be okay. You know, yeah. he, when he walked up those steps, I was like, I'm done. I mean, even if I hadn't have gotten to today, I felt like that was, that was just as right there, you know. These sentences, I believe, are concurrent, right, with what he's serving in Peru. Is that correct? Or, yes, So they there's are. no real chance he's probably going to be back here serving time. No. Do you feel like, though, that wasn't your main goal? That was not my goal, and that should be the goal of Aruba. That was their that was their responsibility, not mine. I'm just the mother who wanted answers. It's Aruba that has the two double murders on their hand, not me. You feel like Natalie's resting easier now? Or? I do. I, th I think I think so because I think she probably was hoping maybe I could enjoy a little bit of life left. Eighteen years, long time. I didn't need to be investigating it for the rest of my life. Can you? Can you put? Can you do it though? Can you put it behind you now? You've been doing it, like yeah. you said, for so long. No, can you? Can it's you over. It? Yeah. There's no more rabbit holes to be pulled down. There's no more swirling theories. There's no more. There's none of that chaotic running around anymore. Well, we wish you the very best. Thank you. And hope you and, get to enjoy life a little bit. And it, I think it's all kind of started too, right here at home. So Birmingham lit the fire that just spread and helped me out, and everyone's been a, so amazingly supportive. So thank you. Thank you. This is uh, Vandersloot caught on camera with murder victim in June 6th of 2010. They've released new video that may become crucial evidence against Joran Vandersloot. Vandersloot, who is the prime suspect in the brutal murder of Stephanie Flores, is shown walking into the hotel room right there with the victim. Hours later, cameras capturing Vandersloot leaving alone. Investigative crime reporter Michelle Sagona is joining me now. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Alex. You know, I mean, this hotel camera, it could not have been closer. It's literally right outside of Vandersloot's room. I mean, how useful Thank is God. this in the case against him? This is extremely useful. Uh, what's important in this case to remember is, is that that particular surveillance camera, from the time that Stephanie entered that room until the time she was found, it's going to show every single person that entered and exited. And at this particular point, uh, what investigators are coming out and saying is that Vandersloot was the only one uh, that was actually seen entering and leaving the hotel room was in his name uh you know at this particular point these are only charges of course he's not convicted yet uh but he is facing those right now in peru he was extradited on friday there from chile and what about reports that he stopped by the desk or said something on his way out do you know anything about that yeah, there are some reports that uh, that he had mentioned something on his way out. Uh, it's not really too clear at this point. Again, it's very difficult in these type of cases, especially when they're international and overseas, when you have a lot of different things coming out from, from different places and not a lot of investigators or first hands-on people there to verify those sort of claims at this particular time. But uh, from what we've learned so far is that they did, in fact, meet in the casino. Uh, they did have some sort of conversation. They are also uh, reportedly to have been seen on video there. And then for, at some particular point, around 5 a.m. on May 30th, that's when they enter the, the hotel room. Hmm. Is there anything about this case that can shed light on the case of Natalie Holloway? 
Well, what's interesting is, is that I have the criminal complaint in front of me from Alabama. And basically, it states that Vandersloot did, did in fact try to extort money for information on where Natalie's body was buried. $15,000 was sent from Alabama to his account in the Netherlands with a promise of a quarter of a million dollars for the direct information leading to Natalie Holloway. Plus, as you know, Alex, you know, you and I have covered this over the last five years, mm -hmm. is that, you know, he did, in fact, admit on tape uh, to a Dutch reporter on a couple of different occasions that he did, in fact, know what happened that night and where Natalie could be. Uh, so whether he is just saying that or whether he has information, maybe on this particular case, investigators will be able to get to the bottom of it. Maybe investigators in Aruba will be able to open this back up again and move forward uh, for the Natalie Holloway case. And maybe both families will finally get some justice. Yeah. And from whom did he get that $15,000? And was this a setup, I mean, intentionally to get him the money so that he'd be caught. Right. Well, what's interesting is, is that this particular criminal complaint does not state who the money huh. came from or where it came from specifically. But there are reports that it was some sort of sting and possibly someone uh, from, from the Holloway family was involved in this in some way and that it was possibly set up between the FBI and also Aruba, sort of like an executed plan there to try to be able to trap him in some sort of state. Okay. My goodness. Well, I'm glad this family has found some sense of closure. They'll never be over this, but at least now they know, and that's and that's a good thing. And God bless them. And that's it. I don't know what else to say.